someone asked me what I think is the future of, you know, careers that many of us have who are watching this coaches, therapists, astrologers, mentors, um, in the face of the advancements in AI. And the reason why this came up is because in the last couple of days, uh, there have been, uh, there's been a major, um, ad announcement advancement by open AI with the company behind chat GPT. And I just want to show you on screen a little bit about from that announcement video. And I'll put that video below here so that you can watch it fully yourself and be blown away by it. Um, but uh, let me go ahead and show you the screen here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to just a part way into the announcement just to give you a, a little snippet, but I promise you there are even more amazing uh, snippets of this video later. But um, let me go ahead, let me go and show this to you here. Hey, ChatGPT, I'm Mark, how are you? Oh, Mark, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking, how about you? Hey, so I'm on stage right now, I'm doing a live demo, and frankly, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Can you help me calm my nerves a little bit? Oh, you're doing a live demo right now? That's awesome. <laughs> just take a deep breath. I mean, just first of all, just notice the intonations and the, and the sort of the, just the nuances of the voice has become, has come so far from, well, a few years ago and even from last year. And so continue on here. And remember, you're the expert here. I like that suggestion. Let me try a couple deep breaths. Can you give me feedback on my breaths? Okay, here I go. <laughs> Whoa, slow down. <laughs> Go a bit there. Mark, you're not a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> breathe in for a count of four. Okay, uh, let me try again. So I'm going to breathe in deeply. And then... And then for four and then exhale slowly now by the way this is all live they're doing all this live so it's not like canned or anything i mean this is these capabilities are you know going to be available for everyone within within a few weeks from now okay i'll try again breathing in and breathe out <sighs> that's it how do you feel i feel a lot better thank you so much <laughs> so mark you've been working on yeah so um and then later on in the video <laughs> which you can see, you know, I'll, I'll give the link below if you want. Um, he, he asked ChatGPT to like tell a bedtime story and even to sing the end of the bedtime story. And it does just, just talking. It's, you know, it used to be that, oh, you have to use one AI for music and one AI for the, now it's just seamless. Like, yeah, so here's the end of the story. And then it just starts going this, into song, just singing. And then, um, and then there's another part of the demo where, you can hear ChatGPT kind of like laughing a little bit and like this. So in other words, um, what we used to think AI couldn't do was replace the human touch, right? And usually when we say the human touch, we don't literally mean I'm a massage therapist and I, you know, I, I need to go to massage therapy and AI, AI can't literally, well, not yet anyway. I think, I think within, uh, I would say within three years, by 2027, um, robotic massage therapists will be will be quite um, will be available and maybe even common. We'll see, but we mean human touch. We mean the social, emotional, verbal intelligence to make us feel like we're being heard, that we're being cared for, etc. And even before this update last year, there was already a study of research where they gave. Um, just regular human beings, uh, like two options to, to see whose bedside manner they liked. And they didn't tell them that one of the options was AI. They just, here's a doctor and their bedside manner. And here's, here's another doctor and their bedside manner. I think this is all done. Um, I think this might've been voice or might've been, might've been type, type text. Anyway, overwhelmingly, the people chose the AI doctor bedside manner. And so it's not going to be just doctors. Doctors, maybe you know, maybe it's 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 known that they don't have the best bedside manners, or many doctors don't, and maybe therapists and coaches and mentors and healers have better bedside manners or social interaction, social intelligence. But I'll tell you, um, increasingly, I've seen study after study where human beings just keep preferring the AI responses to various things. 
AI responses to ethical decisions, AI responses to like, they're having a hard day and, and they have a human versus an AI comfort the person. And anyway, it's stuff like this where I'm like, nobody expected 10, 15 years ago that the first jobs or careers in um, at risk would be uh, creative or emotionally intelligent careers. The ones that ironically are less as at risk are like the plumbers and the home caretakers where they still want humans to take care of their elderly parents or their babies or, or whatever, right? And they still, and plumbing is like so many random tasks in plumbing that you can't possibly, it's hard to train a robot to do all of, to, to anticipate everything. Whereas with language, with voice, and soon with video, like right now, like again, in the next couple of weeks, all of us for free, this is what's scary too. ChatGPT is releasing what you just saw for free for the world, for free. Now, of course, on the free plan, you can only use a certain number of messages a day and then you upgrade, then you'll get a lot more uh, capacity. But, um, but of course, it's, technology is only gonna keep getting cheaper and cheaper and cheaper so that within two years or something, that model you just saw is gonna be freely available, not just in ChatGPT, but I'm sure in, in all of our phones without the internet. And we could use unlimited. And so it brings up the question of companionship, coaching, advising, um, therapeutic care, essentially. And it's like, wow, we thought that we couldn't replace the human touch. And that's what I hear from a lot of therapists and coaches. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't worry. Sure, it can write poetry, fine, whatever. Poetry is not even that good, maybe, but it's very fast. It can draw pictures, fine, whatever. Uh, it's not. You know, it's not a world-class artist, but it's really fast. And sure, it can give you some brainstorming and it can give you some instant, you know, advice and whatever, very fast, but not not like, it's not like you're meeting with Gabor Mate or something <laughs> like that, right? Like, like it's not world-class, but it's above average advice instantly. That's the, that's the key. It's instant and it's free. Okay, I'm not talking about Hmm, should I pay a thousand dollars for a human or a thousand dollars for AI? No, we're talking. Should I pay a thousand dollars for a human or zero dollars for AI, even though it's not maybe as nuanced as my therapist or coach, but it's free. That's what we're competing against in the coming years. And so it does have me. I mean, and the person who asked me the question says, "Am I, am I wrong to be freaking out here? I'm freaking out." By, by seeing what is going to be happening to our, to our careers, our businesses. I said, you're freaking out you, at, the, at least at the appropriate amount. Maybe you're even under freaking out. Because I've been freaking out since November of 2022 when I first encountered ChatGPT. Two years ago almost, I was freaking out. I'm like, I'm, I see the writing on the wall. What's, what's a business coach going to be doing other than telling my clients, why don't you use ChatGPT? Because it's going to come up with answers much faster. And it can comfort you when it comes to, you know, business distress much better than I can. Anyway, instantly 24. Anyway, so what do we do? What is, what is the future of the coach, therapist, mentor, healer career look like with this stuff um, that's freely available to everybody? Um, okay, I'll, I'll first say, I really welcome your comments below and your ideas and just your, I really, I'm, encouraging us to imagine okay because we have several reactions we can have to any technology new technology that's threatening our careers one is i think appropriately <laughs> freaking out or like just being really activated to say i need to i need to start thinking about this i need to start imagining therefore but of course we can imagine badly and therefore become depressed and angry and avoidant and and when I say angry, I mean angry at the technology, but angry at other people who are promoting it, like George Cow. Angry at other people who are using it, like, oh, mom, you should stop using that. You know, you know, brother, you should stop using that. That's bad for my career. If you, it, it's, it's, we can, or we start movements or try to support laws that ban it and all that stuff. And I will tell you, having been around technology for well all my life, but seriously professionally in, in around technology for at least 20 years and seeing you know many waves of technology i'll tell you 
when something is convenient and pleasant for the human for for the human being, it is inevitable that it's going to keep growing. It's going to keep being used, and it's going to keep growing. I mean, it's convenient, it's comfortable, it's um, low cost, and it's uh, in in this case, it's emotionally pleasurable, right? And so, basically, what does that mean for us? It's anyway. So so. Let's observe our reactions. Notice if we're going into ostrich mode, digging our head into the hole. It says, no, 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 no. It's not going to happen. It, you know, somehow, you know, the universe will send us a destruction of AI and we'll back go back to being organic and non-transhuman and all that stuff. Okay. That's maybe some of us wish for that. I I'm a realist. I'm an optimist, but I'm also a realist. And I just don't see that being realistic. It just it. I mean, look at look at what's happened in the last two years since Chet. Anyway, so the trajectory is not is not that it's going out; it's going more intense and going faster. Okay, so therefore, the only reasonable, sensible, mindful approach to this is to say, first of all, just like we saw in the demo, deep breaths, <laughs> all right, deep breaths, and then use our human intelligence to say, how can we utilize what is inevitably a tool that everyone has access to, myself included, how can I utilize it to serve my clients even better, to become an even more effective coach, therapist, healer, mentor, facilitator, et cetera, et cetera, consultant, okay, teacher. So I'll just give you a you know, couple of quick examples from um Give me one moment here. So I'll give you a couple of examples uh, from careers that have been threatened already, even before a coach, therapist, counselor, et cetera. And that is creative um, uh, content creators, writers, graphic designers, and soon, well, and gra writers, graphic designers, more recently, music creators because ai can create astonishing music I, if you haven't yet heard it um maybe i should show you just to give you another example here just give me one moment here all right so <laughs> i want to show you something i have a friend here in mexico who just recently started a water delivery company and just for fun i said all right let me let me uh let me just for fun i'm going to send you some some possible logo ideas okay <laughs> all right i hope you don't mind me saying this so while I was on the toilet, okay, just playing around on my phone on the toilet, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to quickly create like, you know, 20 logos just, just for fun because I kind of know what they're about and, and I'm going to create a bunch for them. And I created like 20 and then I sent them like seven of my favorite ones. And they were astounded. You know, him and his wife were astounded by, oh my gosh, wow, thank you. How much did you pay for this? I said, nothing. Or it's part of my usual AI, you know, sort of design suite that I already use them for my own business. So like, and then they ended up choosing a logo out of what I, what I created. This is a logo directly just straight from my, um, from my AI. And then not only there, um, I then went ahead and used um, Suno. Right now, Suno is not, is not working because it's so super popular. Suno.com and Udio.me. Udio um, and let me go ahead and make sure I can show you the songs here. Okay, one moment. So sorry about that. Share sound. Okay. And then I sent them uh, a song that, again, I did it very quickly. Uh, and I sent this to them. And then they just a day ago used the song in a YouTube video. L listen to this. The first avocado is here to quench you first. Fresh and clean, straight from the source. Hydrate your body, stay on course. Stay on To your door. Okay, I just want you to understand that's not a human singing. That is a computer. Everything has been made just by me typing a few words. Like, okay, it's create me a song for a water company called Agua Katia, and we want to emphasize that it's clean, fresh drinking water, whatever. And then, boom, within minutes, the song the song comes out. The the, the actual video, um, the company owner put the 
images and the video together. Those are actual human beings you saw, but the song was completely generic. So essentially, writers, designers, musicians are already threatened, and videographers, people who make videos within two years, we're all going to be able to generate professional looking videos with just a few words from our mouths or from our imagination within a few years, probably for free. And so if we look at, if we look at um, what smart and wise writers and designers and perhaps musicians, this, the, the music stuff is pretty new, okay? It was within six months that these things came out. So I, musicians are still adjusting themselves. But writers and designers, what are they doing now? The smart, okay, of course, some of some are some are fighting, as we all have seen in the news, right? Lots of, you know, Hollywood, you know, writers and um, book you know, authors and designers are all fighting. Our, our artists are all fighting the AI stuff. But as you can see, it's not slowing down. It's only going to get more widely distributed. This technology. So, what are the smart ones doing? They are creating even faster and working with even more client contracts than ever before. So for example, if I were if I was a copywriter, a smart copywriter, I I would say, oh my gosh. So what I used to have to do is to, I, of course, I talk to my client. Okay. That's something that AI is still not great at yet. Although mm, I'm not sure. Okay. I used to talk to my client and understand what story they want to tell. And then I would go back and and in my own you know home office, I would I would spend a day drafting something that might the client might like. And then the next day I would share, or same day, next day, whatever, I would share it with the client. The client would come back and go, yeah, you know, I really, I like the direction we're going here, but this part, definitely not. And here's why. That would take, let's say two days for a draft and a, and a, and a reply. And of course, most copywriters probably took more than a day. They have, they have multiple contracts they have to deal with. But let's say it took two days. Now with AI, a smart copywriter would be like, okay, I, I heard a smart copywriter do two things, right? One, it is it would have a, ch a trained chatbot talk with I have to say hey client listen i know it's hard for us to schedule time together so why don't you click on this link and just um respond to the prompts that the chatbot's going to give you to keep asking you questions so that we can understand your story and if i have any additional questions for you based on what i read i'm going to let you know right away so the chatbot will talk to the client to understand the story and then give you the deli deliver to the copywriter the, the summary and all the important points, and then create a draft, right? Instantly, this is within minutes of the client finishing. Within minutes, you now have a summary and the draft of, of the possible deliverable for the client. And then the copywriter would look at the draft and go, okay, this part, not bad, pretty good. This part, it's not according to the client's story. I, it's not, it doesn't capture the nuance of their personality or whatever. Let me go ahead and rewrite that. This part, pretty good, but you don't have my voice. Let me give you a sample of my, of my writing. The boom. And then AI, go. Do another draft. And AI will create another draft. Ah, this one's much better. Let's send it now to the client. All within three hours rather than 48 hours, you know, 24 hours or whatever. Like, and then... The, you know, the, the, the copywriter has worked three hours on this, can work another three hours for another client for the same day. Instead of previously, they may have had to like pour over a, uh, a brand brief and, and really spend a day brainstorming and writing and rewriting. a Now it's instead of spending 12 hours on this, they spend three hours on this. And it's probably better quality because they've gone through various iterations with the AI before they deliver even a single draft. And so the client's impressed, like, not only are you fast, but you got my voice, you got my brand story, whatever, okay? Designers are doing the same thing, right? Designers used to have to, like, get the understanding of the client and then, like, spend a couple of days probably, like, drawing by hand or by computer, you know, shapes or whatever. Probably take a couple of days to create, like, five, ten drafts that they would send to the client. Now doesn't need it now they can now they can prompt ai to say all right based on this client story why don't we go with this color palette give me give me some give me 10 examples boom and then the de designer which super uh, has great eye better than the average human will say okay this nuance is good but this part whatever and then instantly within a day 
can deliver to the client probably 10 really good drafts that have gone through several iterations with between the designer and essentially a team of smart interns, the AI. And so the, the designer, the copywriter can now work with multiple clients and deliver much faster, which is higher value, right? You, right? Like, do, what do you want? Do you want speed? Do you want, do you want high, bit better speed, lower cost or higher quality? Well, now with AI, we can deliver all three. We deliver all three. And so um, what does that mean, therefore, for us coaches and healers and cons counselors, consultants? I'm, again, I, I, I welcome, and we, we should probably go to AI and, and have a conversation around this because essentially what I can imagine very quick, just off the top of my head, I, I, I need to spend more time thinking about this, to be honest. Off the top of my head, for example, let's say I'm in a coaching session with a client and the client presents me with a, with a conundrum, with an issue, with a situation. What I probably will say is, okay, let's take the next five minutes and I, I, what, I'm going to invite you to journal on what your internal response is to the situation. Because as a coach or even as a therapist, I want to empower you. I want to, I want to empower your skill for creating your own best solution for yourself so that anytime, even when we're not meeting, you can create that solution for yourself. So let's take five minutes and do that. Okay, so the client is off journaling. Well, I, as the coach, instantly, of course, I might be thinking myself and taking the time to think, but I could instantly go to AI and say, here's the situation. And by the way, if the client is open to me recording this and working with my AI on this, I would say, hey, client, do you mind? I'm gonna have this thing recorded and this thing is going to be heard by my AI. Everything's going to be confidential and secure, not sent to any AI company. It's all going to just be for us, but it's going to be able to analyze and create some possible solutions. Are you okay with that? The client says, are you going to give me better, better solutions and better ideas? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. I take the five minutes. I go and journal. And then I'm now working with the AI to come up with some solution. And based on my expertise as a coach and in, in my industry, whatever, I'll be able to say, all right, AI, um, just in these five minutes, you gave me you gave me these five ideas. I really like idea two and four. Why don't you generate another couple ideas based on two and four? Go. Okay. All right. Good. Or, or maybe the client is distraught or something. And I'm like, wow, I am feeling uh, a little bit intimidated by the situation or are un unable to answer immediately. So I can tell the client again, take five minutes to meditate. Okay. Take five minutes to meditate. Let's convene after five minutes. I'm going to set this timer here. And while I can go to the AI, AI and say, all right, you, you just heard that. How do you, what's, what's your recommend, recommended response to the client? Okay. Maybe even based on all the previous conversations we've had with the client, dear AI. Okay. And the AI will be brilliant in like coming up with the most emotionally appropriate, socially appropriate response that above average, better than most humans and probably better than most therapists and coaches, to be honest, better than most doctors. That's for sure. So in other words, I mean, this is just one idea, right? Of what I can see coming. Um, and those who are not, are gonna be anti-AI, well, guess what? They, they'll, they'll still, there will still ever always be coaches and therapists that are against AI and not gonna use AI. And they might even be proud of that in their, in their practice. They might, that could be part of their marketing advantage. 100% organic, 100% non-transhuman. Okay, fine, it's, it's good, right? But clients will start to notice that mm, they probably prefer the AI enhanced coach or therapist because the responses are just better. And not just responses are better, but wow, because the AI has, has, is privy to my conversations with my coach or therapist and my coach and therapist is very kind to allow me talking to our private confidential AI, even when I'm not there with the coach and therapist, I can talk to it 24 seven. And then the next time I get together with my coach and therapist, the coach has already seen, the coach and therapist has already seen um, the summary of my conversations with the therapist AI that, that, that my therapist is allowing me to use. And there's probably some kind of licensing fee, like, okay, I'm paying not just for my therapist, but I'm paying my, a part of my fee includes 24 seven access to, you know, George Cal coaches AI. Um, before I talk to George next time, George, George, of course, has the expertise that AI can't have and the human grounded experiences that AI can have. But thank goodness, he now has the context 
of whatever happened during this entire week or this these two weeks before be, until before we met that 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 all because problems and and situations don't just happen right before you meet with your therapist or coach obviously right it happens throughout the entire week or throughout the entire month well guess what now that can be at least having some temporary resolution and some guidance and then we meet and then we go deeper so anyway this is just one again i i i I'll, I'll end the video by saying this i think ultimately or from now until then we just need to keep having this conversation we need to keep observing what smart people are doing in our industry and in related industries what are they doing to incorporate these these new tools to add more value to their clients to make themselves even more um indispensable what are the smart people doing let's observe that and then let's see what parts of that we want to also incorporate into our work because what other choice do we have well choice like i said you go 100 percent organic and non-transhuman and yeah there, there may be a future for that and i'm sure there will be a niche for that i just um you know based on <laughs> based on what's happening and based on my observations, funny thing, not funny, but it's just true that humans seem to um, adore AI responses when they don't know it's AI. Now, I think over time, as AI becomes embedded into everything, people are going to just be normalized that, of course, you have AI, this AI, that. It's going to be normalized. And it's going to be kind of weird that some people, it's kind of like some people go, um, like graphic, if you work with a graphic designer, I'm sure some graphic designers says, I don't touch the computer. I do everything by hand. Right, and I'm sure there's a niche for someone who does everything by hand graphic design. It's just you're like, well, can you? Well, <laughs> I don't mind if you use the computer if it's faster and if it's if it gives me more options. Right, the client is going to be normalized that it's okay for anyway. So I look forward to seeing your comments below and and thank you for um, for being in this conversation together. I just want to add one more thing to say that you know what I'm talking about here sounds foreign and alien right to to some of you who haven't who haven't been delved diving into these these uh these tools for the last two years a year and a half like i have um i've purposely done it so that it's become more normalized for me because i see the future and I, if it's like maybe maybe not in 2025 that we're going to have this ai service provider you know uh partnership so so soon but I'm guessing 2026 is going to become increasingly normal that, oh, if you work with a business coach, if you work with a therapist, if you work with a graphic designer, if you work with a mentor, a healer, wait, you mean you can't talk to their AI in between sessions? You, you just, you have to text them? Well, you, have to, you have to email the human being? You just, it would, it, I think it's going to seem anachronistic. It's going to seem old school by 2026, 2027 to not be able to just have sort of like an assistant. It's just like, you know, when you work with someone who has an assistant, you don't expect to, well, let me wait for the business owner to get back to me. You, you talk to the assistant if they're available at whatever it is, scheduling appointments or confirming certain details. But but you if the assistant is trained, right? Like, like my AI will be trained on all my courses, all my books, all my blog posts, all my videos. And wouldn't it be nice if you were working with me to be able to, well, first of all, to be able to pay less. If you say, well, I don't want the meeting with, George human option, because that costs his time. Can I just meet with the George AI option, which is way less? I can charge you way less for that. And it'll be a monthly subscription or some or some kind of thing, some kind of payment that I'm sure is going to be win-win for, for both of us. And it's going to be like, all right, I'm going to talk to George AI because all the courses, everything's already there. Why don't I just keep asking help? Here's my situation based on George's understanding of marketing and, and productivity. What would he save to this probably? And then talk, 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 talk. By the way, this is already available on my website, of an early, early version. If you go to my website, georgecow.com, and check out the button on the bottom right, bottom right of my website, I already have my AI there. Um, it's it's only tr been tr trained on my blog post right now. I haven't. I, I have to take it to the next level and like give access to my courses, and it's kind of a complicated thing. Anyway, but by 2025 or 2026, it's going to be, and probably won't make it for free because otherwise no one's going to pay me for anything at that point right like like we're this is what we all have to keep talking to each other keep noticing how do humans continue to be able to have a livelihood 
to keep adding value, to have the motivation to keep adding value and to be able to be sustained. So therefore, obviously, if I'm able to charge for something that my AI does, I have the motivation and the resources to keep improving that AI interaction. And so um, it's like, and it's like, let's say my client is chatting with the AI and it gets to a particular conundrum where my AI can't answer. Then my AI will say, hey, you know what? Let me send this email to George with a summary of everything we've said. And George will do his best to respond, you know, uh, before our, our, your, your next meeting with him or something like that. And so you don't have to have, like you, you'll be able to use your AI at different levels of, of touch point with the, with the client. It doesn't have to be some kind of all or nothing. Right, it can be it can be light. It can be an assistant of some kind, and so you, the, the the key is that it's what it should do is to free us up from things that are lower order tasks. It it should free us free the, for the service provider like you and me. It should free up time and energy and spaciousness for us to imagine the next level of our service provision. Imagine how we can emphasize and express our energy signature even more powerfully in our work, in our content with our clients. And to say, what is the most essential and irreplaceable energetic exchange I can have with my client that AI can't replace yet, right? And so it's like, it, rather, because there's so much of what we already do you know, like notice that you probably say the same thing. If you have lots of clients, you probably say the same thing to multiple clients. And at some point, which is why a lot of people who do one-on-one -on -one, uh, services, at some point, they're like, I'm tired of one-on-one. -on -one. I want to do group now because I'm tired of saying the same thing to like 50 different people, 100 different people, right? Like it's going to free you up to a more, you might say, spiritual level of work. So I hope this is uplifting and, and, and hopeful. And I look forward to seeing your comments below.